Welcome back to DK Sports Radio. You're listening to the Miller Lite Q&A Podcast. I'm Chris Carter, here with Lance Lizowski, Pirates beat writer for DKPittsburghSports.com, and we're here to answer your question. Lance, how you doing today? Doing well, Chris. Busy week. Uh, Garrett Cole gone, Andrew McCutcheon gone. I feel like I haven't stopped writing for about, well, since before Christmas, Pretty before much. everything kind of started picking up, and it looked like Cole was going to get traded, so... Hey, but spring training is two weeks away, uh, and there's still plenty to talk about, not only with the Pirates, but with the other teams in this city. So let's get to it, Chris. Let's, I'm ready. Let's get let's to it. it. Let's start with our uh, a question from our good buddy, Church of Greg, asking a Steelers question, which of these Tomlin-era playoff losses would you constitute as the worst? 2007 at home to Gerrard um, and, the, and the Jaguars, 2011 loss to Denver with the 8-8 eight eight Tebow Broncos, or this year's loss to the Jaguars. I can't imagine any of these of the other losses would rank ahead of these. Lance, what you got? I think anytime you lose to Tim Tebow, I think that has to be the worst <laughs> loss, right? I mean, that defense that defense was kind of up and coming at the time for the Broncos. They had some pretty much some playmakers, uh, Demarius Thomas on offense, obviously, but. I, I think that we're kind of discrediting the, the Jacksonville Jaguars of how good this yeah. team was in 2017. You know, Blake Bortles aside, I think you have to really give credit to their offense coordinator with how they kind of structure their game plan so Bortles didn't have to do too much against the Steelers. Yeah, he didn't have to be elite. He didn't have to be elite. Uh, they didn't ask him to do a whole lot. He managed the game pretty well. Um so I, I don't think that loss is as bad. That defense is incredible. Yeah. Uh, that that could have been a Super Bowl winning team if, if kind of the stars aligned a little bit. Maybe if they stay a little bit healthier, if Fournette's able to do more, their offensive line hel- holds up later in the latter portion of the season. But, Chris, I think you lose to an 8-8 eight and eight team. Uh, that Broncos team with Tim Tebow, who's yeah. – What's Tim Tebow doing now? Oh, he's a non-roster invite for the Mets in spring training. He's not even a good baseball player. He's a he's going to be a television analyst at some well, he, point. He is one. So. He's 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 the ESPN. He's all right. NCAA yeah. football guy. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. It's the eight and eight Broncos loss, especially the way that it happened. Yeah, Tim Tebow threw for 300 yards on 10 completions. Like that's the kind of they, they gave they just gave up big play after big play after big play. And Ben Roethlisberger, I mean, he just had several plays where he would where he would get get the team in position, then he would wouldn't be able to finish. Um, it was just it was a mix of everything wrong in that playoff run, and it was really tough because the Steelers. They, remember, they went twelve and four that year. The only reason they had to go to Denver is because the the Ravens also went twelve and four, and they swept the Steelers that season. But the Steelers were absolutely they had the number one ranked defense that that season, and they and they fell apart in the most embarrassing of ways to a player like Tim Tebow that's not even in the league. Blake Bortles at least went toe-to-toe with Tom Brady in the AFC Championship game. Yeah, I mean, if you put Blake Bortles on the Browns, he would he would be among their top three quarterbacks in the past 19 years. Yeah. I mean, since since they came back to the NFL 18 years. So, I, I know Lance, it's the Browns, I think, but, I think if he but, was number one, you'd be number two if you were put on the Browns. <laughs> it goes Kelly Holcomb. I'll give you the quick. Cleveland Browns quarterback power rankings. Kelly Holcomb, okay. Jeff Garcia. Legit. And then it would be Blake Portals behind if, Jeff if, Garcia. If, yeah. <laughs> All right. And then Brady Quinn, maybe. No, or, I, no I, I'm not giving that to Brady Quinn. I'll put Jason Campbell over Brady uh, Quinn. Come you, on. Uh, actually, Derek Anderson. Derek, Derek Anderson, Anderson was solid. would yeah, be number true. four, then Jason Campbell. And hey, I mean Trent Dilfer's got to be up there. It's Trent Dilfer. All right, well we went off topic a little bit. Me talking about Browns quarterbacks, but no, I think that when it comes down to it, that Jaguars team was a heck of a lot better. I think they just caught the Steelers at the wrong time. I think if anything, this this loss might be kind of. I don't want to say it's good for the Steelers to lose in the playoffs, Chris. But it's but, motivational, and, and and it could really put this franchise and turn turn the direction slightly. So they make some really necessary personnel decisions. I think they really need to change that dynamic of the locker room a little bit. Getting rid of Mike Mitchell would help. I think getting rid of James Harrison really helped. Mm-hmm. You just have a lot of loud voices. I think you have some really strong leadership, but when you just have guys like Mike Mitchell, yeah, he's a really good leader. He he, he at times he can you know. But he, he watches film. He, he's a good, yeah. He, he's a good example for younger safeties. What he does in the film room, but you know, with some of the stuff he says and some of the stuff he does, it can be a distraction. Yeah. And when you have a lot of guys who can also be a distraction, like Antonio Brown, Le'Veon Bell, you got to kind of all right. Who do we keep? Who do we lose? Right. And, and I think Mike Mitchell's got to go. And, and that's the thing is Antonio Brown can be a distraction because he burned the the Jaguars defense yeah. up and down the field. Le'Veon Bell can be a distraction. Mike Mitchell's not making plays he's out there. Not making it. Even if he was making some plays, it'd be nice. But he really was non-existent. I think he had one pass defense all year, and it was a good pass defense against the Vikings uh, when he knocked the ball out of Kyle Rudolph's hands. But that was it. And that was 
was week two. With Shazier out, I know we, we kind of just completely changed gears to all Mike Mitchell talk here, but I yeah. think it's important to talk about where this franchise is since this kind of question kind of signaled where everybody's what everybody's thinking right now. And without Ryan Shazier, that defense did not have enough playmakers. No. And even he with Shazier, he was, he was the X factor. He was the one guy who was always making plays. And I think that coming into the NFL draft and even coming into free agency, they can find the right fit. Um, that they need to get more playmakers on that defense. And Mike Mitchell needs to go now that Sean Davis knows enough schematically to where he can he doesn't need that other veteran Mike Mitchell in that room. Bring in another guy who can make big plays to complement that young secondary, especially now you got Joe Hayden. You've got some really nice leaders on that on that uh, on that defense. Uh, maybe help it at, at, at linebacker, not only inside but on the outside with Bud Debris kind of being a disappointment they, they need, a little bit. They need a pass. I rusher. think that right now with where this franchise is, Chris, they need to reevaluate. You saw it on offense with the off the OC change. I think on defense, they need a few personnel changes to really get that group over the top. Yeah, I agree. We're going to be talking about that a lot in the off season, talking about who they need to draft, who they might need to go after. But I mean, also it's going to be interesting in free agency because Mike Mitchell getting rid of him is going to free up um, quite a bit of cast space, like. Around like five mil, I think. Uh, Vance McDonald's probably going to need a restructured deal because his his deal that he signed um, before he came to the Steelers was ridiculous. Um, he's not worth all that money, and that's again if they want to keep him. But you got some moves you can make. You know, maybe Ben Roethlisberger if he gets an extension, he lowers his cap hit on the season. Um, and and again, there's some moves that could be made to help boost this team. But ultimately, I mean, you I think you go after a guy in the draft like Rashawn Evans, who's a guy that can play inside and outside linebacker. He rushes the passer, but he also covers in the middle of the field. You need guys that can that, that can play that right now um, but absolutely the defense is where they got to add they, they you know I think they're there are a few steps from from making it there are stu- there are a few steps from being the uh the, the that defense yeah, everybody again. talks everybody thinks that they're they act like they're so far away they're and not. I know I know they're it's not. A, I know there's not a, a sore line to the fact of us telling you know Steelers fans that oh you're, you're you're that close but I mean this is one of the most this is probably the most talented roster in the NFL a couple more tweaks to kind of shore up some depth, shore up a few weaknesses. Uh, look at where the Patriots are, Chris, because yep. right now they're vulnerable. I mean, they're extremely vulnerable. Tom Brady's I mean, not the Tom Brady of old. I mean, yeah, he's made some magic at the and, playoffs, and their defense but defense is, is very suspect. defense stinks. Uh, yeah. They've made some really, really weird personnel decisions the few, last few years. Jamie, uh, Collins, Jamie Collins, Chandler, Collins is the one that really Chandler Jones too, yeah. and he led the NFL in sacks this year. Yeah. Imagine the Patriots with Chandler Jones bringing the pressure. Br- Bill Belichick thinks everybody's expendable, but he yeah. doesn't realize you can't lose pieces like that and just automatically replace uh, them. I, I think that it. they kind of caught lightning in the pan a little bit because they got lucky and didn't face the Steelers. Right. And they faced uh, a weaker Kansas City team at the time. Um, no, they, they, think, faced, they faced the, remember, they faced oh, the Titans. They faced the Titans. They didn't yeah, get them. And, and that was the thing. I, I think if, yeah. if, if the Kansas Sorry, City goes that. back to New England, I think that they beat the Patriots in Foxborough. Yeah, and especially if Kansas City's healthy. That too. Um, I, I, we, we, we could talk about it. Everyone's going to say sour grapes, whatever. You know, the Patriots are in the Super Bowl again, and they're great with all that. I think that I think that the, their defense, one, they get away with a lot of holding calls all down the field. I mean, you saw it against the Jaguars. You saw it against the Titans. You saw it against the Steelers when they played earlier this year, and they don't get called for it. I don't understand it, but – that's I think that I think that they're a lot closer to their tipping point than most people give them credit for. And everybody forgets how young the Steelers were defensively. Yes. Um, they'll they'll get there. I mean, I think that 2018. I mean, and you got to think the window, I guess, is closing a little bit with Ben Roethlisberger where he is in his career with Le'Veon Bell's contract situation. Uh, they got to get it done, and I think there's going to be. That's why there was such a sense of urgency in making the offensive coordinator change. And there's going to be some different changes on this defense, but. I mean, hey, I mean, with what they were able to do at, at certain spurts in 2017, Chris, especially defensively, it was it was kind of special to watch when you see what T.J. Watt was doing when he was at his best. Um, Cam Hayward, Stephon Tua when he was healthy, uh, just the, the young secondary with and the addition of Joe Hayden, how good he was. Um, it, it's it, This could be a really fun team to watch, even more so in, in 2018, I would think. I completely agree with you there, Lance, but we'll get to our next question right after these messages. Football season is here, and it's time to cash in on the nonstop sports action with MyBookie.ag. They have in-game live betting on nearly every sporting event. Plus, MyBookie.ag will match your deposit with a bonus up to 100%. With decades of expertise and no-hassle payouts, you'll experience the greatest customer service in the business, guaranteed. Use promo code DKRADIO to activate your bonus of up to 100%. Call 844-900-BETS or visit MyBookie.ag to open an account. Sign up today. Miller Lite is the original light beer, and we'll always brew it to have more taste, 
with only 96 calories and 3.2 carbs. Because we believe that if you compromise on taste, you can taste the compromise. Miller Lite. Hold true. Great beer, great responsibility. 2018 Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Average analysis, 12 fluid ounces. Less than one gram protein, zero grams fat. What I want from my public accounting firm is big ideas. But I don't want to lose the personal attention. My company needs global capabilities. From a firm with local ownership. And I want to work with industry experts. Who take the time to understand my unique challenges. And that's what sets Schneider Downs apart. Expertise for the most complex business issues. With the service you need every day. To learn how our big thinking with a personal focus can help your company, visit schneiderdowns.com. If you're one of the thousands of Western Pennsylvanians who love to get outdoors, then you need to check out this amazing new website, stepoutside.org. Hi, I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Sports Radio. I'm born and raised in Pittsburgh. I know about the outdoor life that's available to all of us in Western Pennsylvania. Learn where, when, and how you can go camping, hiking, hunting. Take part in power sports, shooting sports, water sports in your local community, across our region, across the country at stepoutside.org. Welcome back to PK Sports Radio. You're listening to the Miller Lite Q&A Podcast. I'm Chris Carter here with Lance Lyazowski. We just got done talking about some uh, some Steelers Tomlin era playoff losses. Switching gears, we're going to talk some Pirates right now. Now, Lance lyazowski has been extremely busy as he was as he's been telling everybody. He hasn't stopped writing. He's typing right now with a coffee in I'm his not hand. Do, I'm not doing. That. I do have a coffee in my hand, but I'm not <laughs> typing. But we're gonna we're gonna switch gears. Sean asks this question: Would Jose Jose Osuna be a candidate for the third outfield position this season? Question mark. No, no, he worked on his play at third base, but with Moran projected there, he needs a new spot. Pirates could really use his power on an everyday basis. I would agree with that last part. They could use his, his power on an everyday basis, but he doesn't have a spot on, on this team right now. Uh, he, he can't play left field. I think anybody who saw him try to play left field last year would agree with the fact that he does not belong, belong out there. His positions in Major League Baseball are going to be first or third base. And third base is really still a question mark. He played there in Venezuela, seemed to be getting better at it. All the reports were positive. But from what Neil Huntington told uh, us at winter at the winter meetings last month is that you know, Jose Osuna is going to need reps, uh, not only a, a ton of reps in spring training, but a ton of reps in AAA to be ready. He just lost a big, big chunk of those spring training reps with the addition of Moran. Yeah. So you could pretty much count him out on on playing that position in with the Pirates at any point. Uh, I would say in the first half of the season, I think that he ends up at AAA, Chris, to uh, to work as on defense at third and first, and uh, maybe some reps in the outfield. I just think defensively he's way too big of a liability right now, unless he hits so well that they need to find a place for him in left field and just kind of take their lumps and just say, okay, well. He's going to be really bad out there, and he's going to cost us a few runs, but he'll be able to make up for that offensively what he's able to do. But I don't know. I think the words right now he's more of a project. I think that they keep him at Indianapolis. They wait until David Freeze is gone. David Freeze is under contract, of course, through twenty eight uh, through 2018. So once David Freeze is gone, that opens up a spot. They need a, a platoon at third and first base behind Josh Bell, maybe somebody who can play a little bit of outfield. Right now, though, I just don't see a spot for him. I think right now he's better off going to AAA, learning third base, and kind of finding a, a, a niche there. Well, it's it's not like the Pirates are in a rush right now to find ways well, yeah, to compete. Yeah, <laughs> there the, there's not a big sense of urgency here. Um, I I do agree with you. I, I I agree with every reader who's asked me this question. I it makes way too much sense. Why would you not put that bat in a lineup when Jose Osuna? He showed his power really plays yeah. in the major leagues. He could really be an, inf- an impactful player. Wasn't able to do it as anything other than really a pinch hitter in, in 2017. And people get hung up on the numbers, but they don't realize how difficult it is being a pinch hitter, Chris. Yeah. You sit on the bench the whole game. All right, I'm going to go to the you cage. You get one and shot. Yeah, you get one shot. Okay, I'll go to the cage. I'll start warming up. There's a whole routine to it, and it takes guys years to really get it down. Like, Sean Rodriguez didn't get good at it for a few years. Um you know, guys like you know, there's there's just so many across Major League Baseball. Though, if you talk to them about just the the structure of pinch hitting, uh, I think right now what the Pirates do with left field is, unless they make another move, which I just don't see it happening, other than maybe trading Josh Harrison for minor league pieces, which it seems like pretty much a, what, a foregone conclusion that the Harrison is gone. I think Fra- Adam Frazier is a starting left fielder. He's good defensively. 
They like his bat. He's not going to hit for any power, pretty much, uh, but could be a top of the order type of guy. Played well there at times, you know, last season. And you got Sean Rodriguez at second base. Sean Rodriguez at second base. Harrison leaves with Jordan Luplo, maybe as a utility outfielder. They got to bring another outfielder in here, Chris. A yeah. good defensive outfielder who can play all three positions. Maybe also you know that someone's going to get hurt. Well, it always happens, and people don't realize that. Um, now uh, this team with ex- how it's built right now, they get one injury, they're 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 done. And I'm not, they're Kinda done like anyway. Ryan they're probably done anyways. Yeah. But I'm saying it could be really ugly if yeah. they get a, a, a sort of long term injury to a guy like Starling Marte, like Josh Bell. They're not able to really they they can't really put the pieces back together. I think they add somebody. I would, and I think they should, add somebody like Austin Jackson who can play center field, maybe start the majority of games in left field. Uh, a guy like that who maybe wants another multi-year deal in his career can come to Pittsburgh you know, on a more of a prove-it deal, uh, perform well, yeah. and, and try to maybe play your way out of there at the trade deadline <laughs> or, or play your way out of there next offseason. Uh, I like Adam Frazier, but I think he's he's more suited – and a bench role. Uh, Jordan Luplo has no business being in the major leagues yet. He only has about 40 games of experience in AAA. Uh, you got to like what he's done power-wise uh, in the minor leagues. Last year, hit 23, 26 home runs around there. Those are those are big numbers. Yeah. People kind of forgot all about him. He's not ready yet for a big major league role. I'd bring another outfielder. Then Jose Osuna can't play left field. He might be able to play right field, Chris, in PNC Park, but in the you're spot. not moving Polanco from right to left again. No. That did not play well. Nope. Polanco told Clint Hurdle he's not comfortable there. Uh, it's just not going to happen. And Chris, another interesting thing here is I had another reader suggest that they move Josh Bell to right field, Polanco to left, and have Osuna at first base. That's not going to happen. Uh, Josh what? Bell just dedicated – the last couple of years, pretty much, the learning first base. They love where he's at right now. Let him play it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you're going to keep him at first base. Let him find comfort there. Let him kind of carve out his niche. And they, they're going to put Gregory Polanco where he wants to be. I mean, because he's going to be very important to their play, not only in 2018, One but of their beyond. Best players left now. Exactly. You know, and uh, I think right now the question is, what do they do at left field? If Harrison's gone, which I think, let's just face just it, face he's, he's going to be gone. Yeah, he's, yeah, they're, they're they're targeting outfielders in those trade talks, Chris, to try to bring in maybe a potential starting outfielder in the trade for Harrison. If that doesn't happen, though, go sign somebody, let Os- Osuna learn in AAA a little bit longer, and go from there. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Um, I think that Osuna, you, he's a guy. Let him develop, you know, because if he's gonna, if you're really developing for the future, if you're really trying to win down the line, and you need this guy, let him learn. Let him get through. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I was trying to hold Bless that you, sneeze Chris. in for five minutes. Woo. Dang it, I almost got it. Ah, anyways, um, but yeah, I agree. Let Os- let Osuna learn. Yeah. he looks good. He does have power. If he get if he becomes defense, if he can get up his defense, if he can be a, that, if he can be let you know more service with him, Pedro Alvarez at third base, then I think that puts the team in a position where they can put him out there, have a bat in the order, you know, have a guy that they can rely on to be powerful, and then they can start adding to other other places on the field. I think right now, I mean, they need David Freeze. His, his defense is excellent at third base. Uh, he might not hit as much. He made a, a he's working. Well, he's working this entire offseason on increasing his launch angle and his swing, trying some new things to try to rebound offensively. If that doesn't happen uh, when it comes to, let's say, June or July, uh, then I think you look to make a move. You might try to unload David Freeze to another team because he would be in demand based only on his defense, his defense alone and his yeah. leadership. This is a guy who has won a World Series. He's made an impact. He was a very good player. He's what they a lot, call a you dirt know. ball player because he yeah. knows how to play ball. What he was a two point wa- two point one WAR when the Pirates did acquire him. They got him for cheap. Uh, he's made an impact. I think right now the point at this point in his career, they need him as a clubhouse leader, Chris, going into this season. They need him as insurance for Colin Moran because who knows what they're going to get out of Colin Moran offensively because, let's face it, he's only played 16 games in the major leagues. If Moran starts, Moran shows you enough. If uh, if Osuna shows you enough at third base in AAA, then you can get rid of Freeze, have Osuna as your platoon at third and first, and, hey, if you want to roll the dice, then stick him out in left field. But no way, shape, or form should he be any more than a last-ditch Option, I guess you can say, to stick out there and left because it it's ugly. It's really ugly. Well, there you have it. We're gonna finish with the Pirates here, but in a few minutes. But we got some messages coming at you on here on DK Sports Radio. 
In Pittsburgh, we bleed black and gold and love our city. Born in Pittsburgh and now celebrating 130 years in the business, Henny Jewelers is proud to be your premier jewelry store. The holiday season is quickly approaching, so whether it's choosing that watch you've always wanted or you're searching for the ring that was made for her, trust Henny Jewelers. Visit our store on Walnut Street in Shadyside to see our extensive inventory of designer engagement rings, watches, and one-of-a-kind jewelry. For more, go to HennyJewelers.com and follow us on social. Embarrassed by that stained carpet in your office? Tired of looking at your dull, dirty floor? My Floor Needs is here to fix that. With years of experience and 24-7 service, My Floor Needs offers stripping and waxing, carpet, tile, grout, and concrete cleaning, as well as polishing and buffing services. Call 888-67-MY-FLOOR or email info at myfloorneeds.com for a free estimate and get your floors looking like new again. Whatever your floor needs, call 888-67-MY-FLOOR. Floor. Does your company ever miss its sales goals or struggle getting new business? Is it tough to hire or to give reps the right tools? Hi, I'm Dan, and I started Engaged Prospect right here in Pittsburgh to help companies like yours. And I'm Sam. We're helping companies hit sales goals and grow their businesses. Think of us as your inside sales team. Our clients are experts in their fields. We're experts in inside sales. Give us a call today at 412-715-5151. Or visit us online at engagedprospect.com slash DK. It's been 50 years since the summer of love, but if you're not performing as well as you'd like, check out NEDforless.com. I'm Eric Cushy of Curtis Pharmacy. Don't pay premium prices for the little blue pill. So Denafil, the same active ingredient as in Viagra, costs 80% less. NEDforless.com. All we need is your physician's name. We do the rest. Free shipping, too. NEDforless.com. Curtis Pharmacy. Western PA's Better Way Pharmacy. CurtisPharmacy.com. Welcome back to DK Sports Radio. You're listening to the Miller Lite Q&A Podcast. I'm Chris Carter here with Lance Lyonsowski, Pirates beat writer here at DKPittsburghSports.com. We just did, a, we did one Pirates question. We got another one from our Question of the Week winner, Lance. And what our we got? Question of the Week winner is none other than our good buddy, Radio Wave. Congratulations, Radio Wave. Be sure to look out for contact from our people at DKPittsburghSports.com. We'll be contacting about your weekly prize. Now, for your question, that is Question of the Week, for, from the low point, for the Pirates in 2010, it took them three years to make the playoffs. Lance, are they right now this t- this Pirates team three years away from making the playoffs again? I think it's shorter than that. Um, I I know that most Pirates fans are probably going to want to throw tomatoes at me yeah, or whoa, something for, get out of here. for saying anything positive about this franchise at this point in time. But they've got Josh Bell, they've got Starling Marte, they've got Gregory Polanco. Look at that rotation, guys. I mean, there's. Go look at Miami. Their rotation isn't close to being as good as the Pirates. And there are a few teams in Major League Baseball I can name who don't have a rotation as good as the Pirates. I'm not thinking about good, not even not right now, but the potential it has. Jamison Tyone yeah. could easily be an ace. I think he has the, the the type of stuff to be an ace. I mean, look what he did. The one start I can think of right off the, the top of my head was in Philadelphia in early July. Just incredible stuff. When he's at his best, he's incredible. Um, Avon Nova's under contract for two more years at a very reasonable price. I think that we... He could return to form what he did maybe in the second half of uh, of 2016 when he arrived. Trevor Williams, Chad Cool, uh, I really like Joe Musgrove. If he doesn't contribute in the rotation, at the very least, he's going to be a very valuable bullpen piece. Um, you've got Tyler Glass now, Stephen Brault. I think Brault probably has a higher ceiling than Glass now right now, but Glass now, hey, maybe he becomes a valuable bullpen guy. You never maybe. know. Um, Mitch Keller's coming along, uh, who top prospect right now. Austin Meadows is on the way. Colin Moran could be a very, very – he can – Really be, if you look at the comparisons, Chris Davis, the Orioles, a guy who could hit 30 to 40 home runs. I don't think he's even close to being there right now because I think that his power is just – he's still developing, Chris. It's going to take a couple of years. But I think with what they have, you know, in on this team and what's coming up, I think two years, maybe. I, I don't. I think 2018. There, there's no way they're they're going to compete. But 2019, if everything goes according to plan, which obviously doesn't happen, and, See, you, and you need to add free agency. The, we, you need to add in free agency. You need to add a couple of pieces, a couple of veterans, like somebody like Austin Jackson, you know, th- who really puts them over the top. If I make a comparison, I think this team is right around where the 2003 Cleveland Indians were after Jim Tomey leaves. That's very interesting. Uh, they did have a, a more proven starting pitcher in CC Sabathia. I will give you that. But the Pirates bullpen is going to be 
really, really good, I think. And, you okay. know, maybe even as soon as 2018 with uh, with Michael Feliz, uh, Kyle Crick could be really good. One of the guys who doesn't make the rotation in there, Edgar Santana, Davidis Neverowskis, George Contos. I love where the bullpen is at. I just think that right now, Chris, when you have some time for these guys to develop, the, there's, the ceiling is quite high for this group, especially if – uh, Semedos comes up and contributes. I'm very curious to see where this franchise goes because you know what? It could be three years. But in my honest opinion, I'm saying one or two. Really? It's interesting to me because the thing is, is when you started going through names, that's a lot of ifs. That's a lot. You well, know, that's that's professional sports. That though, is very Chris. true. When you're dealing with young players, um, when you're co- there's no such thing as a surefire prospect. Nobody no, there's nobody not. thought Aaron Judge would was, be would be the man that he was. Well, yeah. But my thing my thing with with, with that is that it'd be different. If you're talking about, you know, an organization that has shown oh, yeah. more more credibility in their picks of coming up, you know, the Yankees are at least credible in the sense that they've been able to build squad after squad after squad, and they've they've had to tear them down, and rebuild again, and you know, spend and they can spend that money. But when it comes to picking people in the draft and them and developing them, the Pirates just haven't been that squad. But you know what? They've got J- Josh Bell. They got, do. They've got Jordy Mercer, mm-hmm. who's a really a, a, a pretty damn good shortstop, you know. in in the grand scheme of things, Elias Diaz, who's going to be, a, I think, going to be a, a good major when league catcher. He, when does he become? He's going to be a platoon with Cervelli this year, and okay. I think he takes over after that, unless something happens with Cervelli. But they, I think, one more bridge year uh, for him. I hate to use bridge year. Sorry, guys. Uh, Adam <laughs> Frazier. Uh, but again, I mean, and, and Gregory Plonk and Sterling Marte didn't come over from the Dominican Republic, being the players they are right now. This organization can develop players uh they haven't drafted well enough yes but they they have hit in some areas i think that the thing that's hurt them isn't that i think it's knowing when to add complementary pieces through free agency to help the guys that you develop you're not going to hit 10 out of 10 in developing players and drafting you you need to be able to go out and say okay i'm going to go hand this guy a 10 million dollar contract and take that risk the thing about this front office that has driven everybody crazy is they're way too afraid of taking a risk with money. Okay, you can go ahead and say, well, we took a risk by re-signing Francisco Cervelli, but you never took a risk in adding an additional starting pitcher. Trading Neil Walker for John Neese, you can't tell me that's much of a risk. No, uh, but, but also, Cervelli, I mean, that that kind of a risk, I mean, the dude had no bop in his bat. You're trying to replace Russell Martin. Who pitch was, framing, who though, was, Chris. What, I mean, what, come on, I would I'm never. I'm sorry, com- his impact on the pitching staff and behind the plate behind, but can com- be immeasurable when com- it comes to offense. Compared to Russell Martin, though, how many? But no, at that point, what's Russell Martin done since he left? What's he done? He since was he, he left? helped he helped the Blue Jays when they was when they were one competing year, in the playoffs. One year, and he got seventy five million dollars. The Pirates not, weren't giving him that. I'm not saying I'm not saying that the Pirates should have just should have paid Russell Martin the money that he got from from Toronto. I'm saying that. The risk on Cervelli, I just I felt like that was a huge drop off. Oh, I, mean, I mean, I mean, Russell Martin has has the most iconic moment in pirate sports since si- in, in recent history. I think they looked at where they both were defensively at that time. I think they valued pitch framing, the things that they can do with the pitching staff at that point in their career, more so than the impact offensively. I, I think that that's where they prioritize. Mm-hmm. And let's face it, there aren't a lot of catchers in Major League Baseball who who are really impact bats. I mean, Matt Weeder's uh, downside of his career can still hit. Buster Posey. Uh, it's, a, it's a very difficult position to draft and uh, evaluate because a lot of these guys don't come up as catchers. No. Russell Martin was a what a junior college shortstop converted. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of these guys, when they, they're brought over from the Dominican Republic, Venezuela, international signings, they're not catchers. So it, it's not a, a perfect science. I think that it was worth the risk. I think Elias Diaz is 26 years old. It's time for him to kind of take over and, and be that guy. But, again, I think I think right now this organization has pieces in place, but it's on ownership and the general manager to, to know – when and to know who to take risks on in free agency and bring additional pieces in because time and time again they've just proven that they don't care uh, about doing that they need they need to really show the fan base that we're willing to make that commitment because the trades they did make in the deadline in 2013 2014 2015 those minor moves they weren't willing to trade prospects but sometimes you know what chris you got to be willing to trade prospects to really push yourself over the top Yep, I agree, and that's what what we'll be seeing if the Pirates are eventually willing to do, if they ever do get if. back to that point that we're talking about, that Radio Wave wants to see in three years another playoff run for the Pirates. But those are our Miller Lite questions. Congratulations again, Radio Wave, for winning your contest. Again, be, be on the lookout for contact from us. We'll be, we'll be contacting you. Uh, Lance, good show, buddy. Hey, it's always fun, Chris, and we got good questions this week, and that's like, 
you know, when you don't get good questions, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not going to point any fingers. But there have been some <laughs> times where we have one of these where we're like, oh, what are we going to talk about? Yep. But no, three good questions. You know who Thank you are. Thank you guys again <laughs> uh, for your participation. Uh, we, it's not overlooked. We love the engagement we get on the site. I think that's what kind of separates us from everywhere uh, else. Us from everybody else uh, for you guys and your involvement in it. So thank you very much. And thank you to Miller Lite, our yeah. sponsor. Thank you, Miller Lite, for the, for the sponsor. We cracked open a bunch of questions today. But... Be sure to keep listening to DK Sports Radio. we got lots of great content coming up. We'll be getting you ready for the Super Bowl for the next two weeks. Lance is going to have some great Pirates coverage. But, yeah, stay tuned. we got some more coming for you from Chris Carter and Lance Lizowski.